This is Morning Motivation for Educators on the Bee Podcast Network. Learn about all the shows at beepodcastnetwork.com. You'll hear from a variety of formal and informal educators who help put this podcast together. If you'd like to contribute your voice to the show, please go to morningmotivationedu.com to apply. I am Karen Dudek Brannon. I was a school SLP for 14 years where I specialized in language literacy and executive functioning and also held various teaching, leadership, and research roles. Now, I am the host of the De Facto Leaders podcast on the Be Podcast Network, where I help school therapists, teachers, and administrators be leaders on their school teams, no matter their job title. The coaching industry has grown a lot this past 10 years, and it will continue to grow. And there are a lot of people who are in the world of education who are investing in things like life coaching. I am one of those people. What I've found, regardless of the person's license or credentials, is that you do have to have a conversation with someone in order to see how skilled of a coach they are. And I found this to be particularly true when it comes to mindset coaching. And and I've also found that mindset is used as a panacea by coaches who are less experienced and who are less savvy in communicating their marketing message. And I wanted to share a couple examples of what I mean, because if I am working with a coach or if I'm thinking about hiring a coach, if they immediately start to tell me that all of my problems are mindset issues, that is an immediate red flag that I should not hire that person. This is not because I think that mindset issues are not important. In fact, I think that mindset work should be layered into pretty much any tangible strategy that you're doing. But what often happens is that coaches that have less experience will sometimes default to mindset work when they don't have the expertise to give you the specific strategy that you need. If someone is a good coach, they're able to ask the right questions to help you get past those cognitive distortions that you might be experiencing. Really, when we're talking about limiting beliefs and some of the things that are mentioned in the life coaching industry, a lot of times it's limiting scripts or limiting beliefs. Really what we're talking about is cognitive distortions, which is a term that is related to cognitive behavioral therapy. And when you're experiencing a cognitive distortion, it can be difficult for you to unwind yourself. That's why you do need a skilled coach in order to ask the right questions to help illuminate things. And typically, the right way to do that is not lecturing you and telling you that you have a mindset issue. What that actually does is the opposite of what you need. That causes you to be even more defensive. What a good coach does is get under mindset issues. What they're doing is they are asking you the right questions to facilitate that process. I have found that the best mindset coaches that I've worked with that have actually helped me get through some of the things I was distorting don't use the word mindset at all. They don't tell me that I need to change my mindset. They just ask the right questions to do it. I'll give you a specific example. So I am in a program that is designed to help people who are wanting to start a coaching or consulting business and they have a mindset coach who is on all of the calls. So there's one person who helps with the strategy and there's one person who helps with the mindset. And the mindset coach will just kind of jump into the conversation if she thinks that the person is having a mindset issue versus a strategy issue. There have been several times that I have been on one of those coaching calls and the person who was talking to me the entire time was the mindset coach. And it wasn't until after the call that I realized that what I was experiencing was probably a mindset issue, but we, they didn't stop the conversation and make a big deal about my mindset issues. All she did was just start having a conversation with me like a normal person. This specific coaching program is called Uncage Your Business. It's run by Becca Tracy and her mindset coach's name is Erin Foley. And Erin also offers coaching for people who want to feel more confident in their new job. This happens a lot in some of the programs that I host. And what I've seen happen is that They will say things like, well, I emailed my building administrator about this concern I had and nothing happened, nothing changed. 
And so what that person is experiencing is cause and effect thinking, where you do one thing and you expect there to be an immediate result. And really it's just a form of all or nothing thinking, which again is a mindset issue. So what I'm going to do there, I'm not going to tell that person you need to change your mindset. What I'm going to do is talk to them about how a lot of those ongoing conversations are just planting the seeds for the future. And what we're going to do is we might have a back and forth conversation about times where they made a suggestion and then something happened eventually later on that was a result of a conversation they had a long time ago and they didn't realize it, but they were planting the seeds for something in the future. So we'd have a conversation about how to think about those day-to-day -day interactions where you're asking for something and you're asking for a change that might be a long-term thing. Again, that whole idea of all or nothing and cause and effect thinking is common within the education system when there are a lot of things that you want changed and it takes time to do it. Another example that I've seen is called mind reading where somebody is doing something or acting in a certain way and you're making assumptions about why they're doing it or what their intentions are. One example would be uh, my school administrator is telling me I have to do these lesson plans a certain way and that doesn't make sense for me in my classroom or my therapy sessions and my students. And so an assumption that might be had is, well, the school administrator doesn't care, or they don't understand, they're not concerned about my day to day. And I would be asking that person questions to gain a little bit of context about their relationship with their administrator and what they actually know. And usually what happens is that they start to realize that they don't actually have all of the information about why that person is doing what they're doing. And so we can get to the bottom of what they can do in order to gain more information about that person's intentions instead of making assumptions. So those are two common things. And again, in both of those situations, I would not be telling people they need to change their mindset, even though that is part of what they need to do. What I'm going to do is ask them questions in a back and forth interaction to help pull that information out or I might make some recommendations about places they can go in conversations that they can have in order to get some of that information themselves so that they can have that discovery on their own. When I'm looking for a coach, I am looking for somebody who's going to help me do the same thing. They might have a conversation with me in the moment to help shift and reframe things before I go and take specific actions, but that they're also going to be facilitating specific actions that are going to help lead to those mindset shifts on my own. And yes, there might be times when it is appropriate for us to say, you know what, you are mind reading or you are experiencing cause and effect thinking right now, um, and let's see if we can think about this in a different way. It's okay to point out different assumptions and distortions, but often making the statement of this is a mindset issue is too vague for people to know what to do with. My recommendation for you, if you're looking for a coach, is to just see how you feel when you're talking to that person. After you have that call with them or after you have a conversation with them, are you thinking about things a little bit differently? Do you feel defensive or do you feel like you have clarity? Thanks for listening. And whatever role you have in education, we have a podcast for you at bepodcastnetwork.com. Who among your friends and colleagues needs to hear this message today? Please share it with them right now.